All right, so in this video, we're going to do the derivative of the uh, inverse hyperbolic tangent function. So uh, if we have d dx of inverse tangent of x, uh, that's equal to 1 over 1 minus x squared. And notice we also have this restriction that the absolute value of x has to be less than 1, strictly less than 1, not less than or equal to. So uh, remember, that's the same thing as saying negative 1 is less than x is less than 1. Uh, and again, just like before uh, in the last video, uh, this restriction here, it's not really a calculus thing, it just comes from the definition of the inverse uh, hyperbolic tangent function. Okay? So uh, one thing I also want to point out is that um, there's, you know, we also have another kind of notation. We could say uh, arctang x. Okay, that's the same thing as saying the inverse tang of x. Um, and similarly, we could also say uh, arcsing of x for the inverse hyperbolic sine of x, uh, and so on and so forth. So we have similar kind of notation for inverse hyperbolic cosine, uh, inverse hyperbolic secant, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so that's that. Just want to point that out there. Okay. Um, and notice uh, the derivative of arctang of x equals one over one minus x squared, and that's pretty similar to the derivative of arctan, right? The derivative of arctan is one over one plus x squared. But the derivative of arctang, okay, the hyperbolic one, uh, is 1 over 1 minus x squared. So that's uh, kind of interesting, I guess. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and see why this is true. So first we want to write down this other definition here. Inverse hyperbolic tangent of x equals uh, 1 half natural log of 1 plus x over 1 minus x. And again, we have that restriction that the absolute value of x is less than 1. Okay, so um, this is just a definition okay, of the uh, inverse hyperbolic tangent, and you could show it kind of the same way uh, that you can show the inverse hyperbolic sine or inverse hyperbolic cosine uh, in terms of the natural logs. But again, that's a topic for a different video, um, pre-calculus trig thing. So uh, let's just go ahead and uh, jump right into this derivative with this definition here. So d dx of inverse uh, tang of x equals d dx of 1 half natural log of 1 plus x over 1 minus x. Okay. Um, now this 1 half is just a constant, right? So we can just pull it out of the derivative. So let's come down here and do that. So that's equal to 1 half times d dx uh, of what? Well, what do we have here? Natural log of something divided by something else. So remember the rule that says natural log of a over b, okay, like that, uh, equals natural log of a minus natural log of b, right? So in this case, a is 1 plus x, and b is 1 minus x. So we're going to expand this log into a difference of two logs. So that's just a, remember, that's a property of logs from a pre-calc. So that's natural log of 1 plus x minus natural log of 1 minus x. Okay. So that's what we've got so far. Um, so now... If we want to differentiate, we're just going to do it term by term. So this is actually kind of nice because uh, it's going to turn out to be a little bit simpler uh, than in the last couple of videos. You know, we had those uh, messy algebraic expressions to simplify with complex fractions, etc., etc. Um, this isn't really as bad. So if we want to uh, evaluate these, first we still have the one half out here, right? So we have one half being multiplied by everything. Okay. Um, derivative of natural log of a thing is equal to 1 over that thing times the derivative of that thing. That thing is 1 plus x, and the derivative of that is just uh, 1, right? Really, it's a 0 plus 1, but um, that's just 1, okay? So again, uh, natural log of a thing, if you want to do the derivative of that, that's going to be 1 over that thing, okay? 1 over that thing times the derivative of that thing. Uh, so then we have the second term now minus, okay, minus, uh, the derivative of natural log of a thing is 1 over that thing multiplied by the derivative of that thing. Now, the derivative of 1 minus x is actually 0 minus 1, okay, because we've got the minus sign in front of the x now. So we have a minus 1 here to worry about. So that's, uh, that comes from the chain rule, so watch out for that. Uh, kind of easy to forget, but you do want to be careful with that. Okay, so now let's simplify everything. So we have uh, equals 1 half times, what do we got? 1 over 1 plus x, and then plus 1 over 1 minus x, okay? So 1 over 1 plus x. Uh, let's leave ourselves a little bit of room here. 
plus 1 over 1 minus x. Okay? So why do we want to leave ourselves some room? Uh, the reason is because now we want to get a common denominator here, okay? uh, so that we can simplify this. So that's our next step, get a common denominator. Okay? So here the denominator is 1 plus x, here it's 1 minus x, so the common denominator, uh, and also the least common denominator in this case, is uh, we're going to get it just by multiplying these denominators together. So uh, if we want to get a common denominator, multiply this guy by 1 minus x over 1 minus x, and then multiply this guy by 1 plus x over 1 plus x. Okay? So now we have a common denominator here, and that's good. Good, good, good. All right, what's next? Now we just simplify. Uh, so this equals 1 half times, uh, on the top we have 1 minus x plus, uh, let's write it out like this, 1 times 1 minus x, and then plus 1 times 1 plus x. And then what do we have on the bottom? Uh, 1 plus x times 1 minus x, right? 1 plus x, 1 minus x. So 1 plus x, uh, 1 minus x, all right? So um, just showing a lot of detail here. And we're kind of out of room, so let's work our way back up. All right, so if we start working our way back up, then this is going to equal uh, 1 half times what? 1 minus x plus 1 plus x, okay? 1 minus x plus 1 plus x all over what? Uh, if we FOIL this, first gives us 1 outer minus x inner plus x, so they cancel, right? Minus x plus x, uh, and then minus x squared. Okay, so um, now we have a bunch of stuff to simplify. So on the top, minus x plus x cancel. On the bottom, minus x plus x also cancel, that's great. Uh, also on the top, 1 plus 1 gives us 2, so what we actually have here is 1 half times uh, 2 over 1 minus x squared. Okay? And the 1 half and the 2 uh, cancel, and when this 2 cancels, what we're left with on top is just a 1. Okay? Just a 1. So this actually equals 1 over 1 minus x squared, um, and that's what we wanted, right? So uh, this is uh, the proof that the derivative of inverse hyperbolic tangent is equal to 1 over 1 minus x squared.